This lesson is about creating charts on Google Looker Studio and how to analyze data with them. In this lesson, I will show you how to analyze data and how to use a specific charts and when. So I will start, I will create a new Google Looker Studio report and I will connect a data source. The most common one I will say is Google Analytics. So I will connect Google Analytics data. You already know how to connect your data. If not, you can go to the specific tutorial on connecting your data on Google Looker Studio. So here I will add a new chart and the most common type of chart that we will use is scorecards. I will say a scorecard is the general, the basic one, which is simply displaying a metric. So I will paste the scorecard here, and now I can change the number. I want to visualize or the metric. So instead of views, I will do sessions, and now we are done with the scorecards. Whenever or always that you create a report, most of the times you will start with a scorecard because the first thing I want to know is the what, and this is the best way to describe, to describe what is happening. All the other charts, like pie charts, bar charts, time series, describe the how or maybe the why. That's why this is the most general uh, one that you will use. So here I will add a new one, which is a table, and I will drop it right here. And what makes tables special is that I will say they are the most useful way to visualize your data and the most generic one, because you can add as many dimensions as, and metrics as you like. With time series, you can only choose a handful of metrics. With tables, you can use all your metrics. And to me, tables are the best way to say multiple stories. It's not the most visual way to do it, but I will say it is the most complete. That's why many users still use Google Sheets to visualize or to analyze their data because it is simply useful. It simply works. So here I have a table. Now I will do some changes instead of even name. I will display, for instance, the full page URL. And now I am breaking down my traffic by page URL. So here I can know what pages are the most important ones or the ones that bring more traffic to my website. I will create a new type of chart. So I will go to add a chart and now I will do time series. What I love about time series after scorecards and tables, I will say this is the most common one because it is very common that we want to see data over time. So I want to see my data and break it down by date or I can change by week or by month or whatever I want. So I will click here on dimension and instead of date, I will choose week. And now you see that you can break down your data over time. I think that time series are very helpful to see the evolution over time, to find patterns, to find, to find trends, especially in marketing. If you want to see if you are growing or not, if the campaigns that you're doing are working, I think that time series are the best way to spot those insights. That's why to me in general, all the marketing reports can miss anything but scorecards, tables, and time series. To me, these are the most important visualizations that you can create. Now I will go with bar charts. And bar charts are another way to break down your data. If you ask me, bar charts are like tables, but to display less data more visually. So for instance, I will use bar charts like gender to break down my data. And now I can see my traffic by gender. But I wouldn't say this is the best use case for bar charts. To me, bar charts are great when I want to display ordinal data versus cardinal data. Oh my God, what is that? That was so nerdy. Ordinal data, I don't know actually if that's the name in English, <laughs> by the way, this is the translation in Spanish, but it's data that has an order. For instance, the days of the week have an order, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. But gender doesn't have an order. You can display it however you want. The source of acquisition of your traffic doesn't have an order. Google doesn't come after Facebook, for instance, but age groups, um, what's say, okay, age groups, our days of week have an order. That's why bar charts to me are better for data whose values have an order that you can use to break down your data. Very similar to bar charts is pie charts. And to be honest, pie charts are one of the worst ways to visualize your data because you will lack a lot of context. You won't see, for instance, if the data is evolving over time. Even though they look very good, I, I will accept it. You will look very smart if you use them. I wouldn't say they are the best one. However, to me, they have the same use case as bar charts, but the data might be cardinal without an order. So in this chart, instead of gender, I could use source so I can display and can break down my data and I can see what source is bringing more traffic to my website. And it looks great. So to me, these are the most common ones. Uh, let's see other types of charts on Google Looker Studio. So I'll go to add a new page. I want to add more charts, but not in this page. So add a page. 
And now I will go to add a chart. And the next chart is a map. I think this is very useful. And of course, it is for geographical data. I will paste it right here. Google Looker Studio offers different types of charts, one that is a graphical, uh, more simple way. And also you can embed a Google Maps. This is actually a Google Maps. And as you can see, I can only display geographical data. So in, if your data, you have cities, regions, zip codes with specific locations, this will work and you can display geographical data here. What data I can visualize? The dimensions or every point is a specific value, a specific city, for instance, or a specific country. But you can add multiple metrics in a single map because I can change the size of the bubbles and the colors of the bubbles. So actually, you can add multiple metrics and visualize multiple metrics with maps. So here, this is an example of, of a map. And you can see, for instance, that this is actual data from Power Metrics. I can see that we have traffic everywhere in the, in the world. That's fantastic. Instead, or except for Russia, but for obvious reasons. Now, I, I will use a new type of chart that is called a um, double axis chart. So I will paste it right here. And a double axis chart is very similar to a bar chart, but I can combine multiple uh, metrics or dimensions. So here, I will add the dimension category, device category. So I want to break down my traffic data by device. So I want to see what brings more traffic to my website. Of course, it's desktop. So I want to visualize desktop, um, mobile, and if someone ever uses a smart TV to use Google Looker Studio. That doesn't happen. And I can use two metrics. That's why it is called double axis chart, because I can find correlations between metrics. So this correlation is obvious. The more sessions I have, the more conversions I have. But I could create some metrics that don't have a relation. And that will to me, that to me would be insightful. For instance, hey, the more sessions I have on a website on or a specific page or on a specific device, the less time per session I have. That correlation doesn't exist, but this is an example. The more something happens, the less something happens. But in this case, with sessions and conversions, I don't think I will find this this example. What is interesting, at least I know that my traffic is relevant because the more sessions I have, also the more conversions I have as well. Maybe there is an obvious relation there. Now, I will go to other chart and I will go with an area chart. And to me, this one is beautiful because this one combines the context of breaking down your data with bar charts or pie charts and also a context of over time with dates. So it is the combination of a time series and a pie chart. And I will show you an example of this, of this thing. So I will use session source to analyze the data. With this chart, I can see over time how my uh, traffic is evolving. So I know that my traffic, is, my traffic is steady every week, that on weekends we don't have traffic. <laughs> and Google is the most important traffic source for our website. But something important is that there is a purple area there. And that's LinkedIn. So it says that on April, we used to have a lot of traffic on LinkedIn, and now we don't have it. And this makes sense because in the latest days, I haven't published on LinkedIn. So this is useful because I can see more context. Over time, over time I'm breaking down my data by a specific dimension. Now, let's see another example. Actually, I will show you. I actually added the analysis here. We can see that, for instance, LinkedIn used to be more representative on April. I will go, I will create a new page. And I will show you one of the least common charts that you will use, but that will make you look very smart, which is the scattered plot. And to me, it is actually very, very useful, not for general dashboards, but for data analysis. So I will use a scattered plot. And a scattered plot let us compare and find relations between two or three metrics. So here I will drop a screen and every point will be the value of a dimension. So in this case, I will do it with page URL. I want to see all the pages of my website in this chart. And the metrics that I will correlate are sessions, one, and sessions per user. So here I have, this is a misconception of scattered plots. People think that they are only for finding correlations. And I don't think there is any correlation between sessions per user and sessions. The more sessions I have, the less sessions per user I have. It doesn't make sense. The other use case for me, is finding patterns and finding clusters, finding where most of the pages are and where there are outliers. And this is an example. For instance, 
I can quickly notice that most of our website pages have less than a thousand visits. And most of our website pages have on average one visit per session. But we have some outliers. For instance, this page is the most popular one. It has a lot of traffic, but only one visit per session. And it is our app, our homepage of the app. It makes sense. And also I have this outlier that is very valuable because this page has a lot of traffic and people on average visit it twice per session. So this page is very important. With this, I can find insights to find my, my most valuable uh, pages on the website by traffic and also by engagement. Now, this is an example. For instance, this is also one of the pages of, of our app. So I can see that our users are more intensively using this page. And if I want to do some change, maybe I should start here. Or if I want to add a pop-up to be more visible, maybe I need to add something here because people stay longer or they visit more this page and many visits come to this page as well. This is a very good insight. Actually, we have another tutorial on how to analyze your social media performance. And we use scatter plots to find our best performing posts by comparing engagements, and impressions because sometimes social media posts have a lot of engagements but not that many impressions or they have a lot of visibility but people don't engage with these posts so if i compare both i can see what are the best performing posts and the best performing posts are the ones that are better than the average on both impressions or visibility and engagement this was an earth example by the way now i will show you a final type of visualization so i will go to page I will go to add a new page, I will go to add a chart, and now I will create a tree map. And tree maps to me are very useful because they allow us as well to break down our data but in two levels or three levels or more. And I will explain that concept better. So here, I will break down my data by medium. So mediums are the way to categorize where our traffic comes from. So traffic comes from uh, social media or Google or PPC. So that's the general dimension. But there is also source. And source is included in medium. For instance, medium is social media. But source is Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter. They are values within or inside the medium social media. Or for instance, the medium is PPC. Okay, the sources or the values of the source for PPC could be Facebook ads, Google ads, and so on. So the good thing about tree maps is that I can include multiple dimensions in cascade that are grouping one dimension in another dimension. Another example is, hey, I want to break down my data by device. And within device, I want to break down my data by brand. So I can break down by mobile and desktop. And I can break down on mobile by brand. So I have Samsung and I have Apple, for instance. That's why tree maps are very useful. I can break down my data in multiple levels with multiple dimensions. And with this class, I hope that you, you have understood how, a little bit more about how to create charts on Google Looker Studio and how to analyze data with them. Let's see how to create scorecards with sparklines on Google Looker Studio so you can add more context to the metrics that you are visualizing. I will start from scratch by creating a Google Looker Studio report so I will click here on blank report. In this case, I will choose the Google Analytics connector by Google. And I will connect our website data, our property, add, and we are almost done. Now I will click on insert because I will add a new chart. And in insert, I will choose a scorecard. I will paste it right here in the corner. And I will choose a different metric. Instead of views, I will do it with sessions. And I will add the sparkline. And the sparkline, I will show you what it is. It's like a time series or a complement to add context to the chart. So in a sparkline, I will choose by default date. And as you can see, the available dimensions that I have, I relate it with time. So I am supposed to see this data over time like a time series, but smaller. That's why it is called the sparkline. So here I have date. And now I am visualizing my same session's data by date. But this is not my only option because I can also break down my data by week. So here I am visualizing by week, but I can change the comparison or the context. Instead of comparing my data with dates or with weeks, I can compare it against a progress, against a fixed value, against something else. I will show you what I am talking about. So here in other comparison options, I can choose value and I can manually put an input like 
200,000. So here I can use this to set an objective. For instance, I have an objective for this month to 200K visits uh, or 100K visits, and I can put it here. And instead of a time series, I could use a show as progress. Now I can have more context to my data because to me, 57,000 sessions say nothing. Now, 57,000 sessions is 57% less than my objective. So I am falling behind for my objective uh, with Google Looker Studio and for traffic. So here, besides manual input, I can do it more dynamically. I can add a metric and I can compare to a metric. This is particularly useful if you have metrics so you can record uh, goals, for instance. This is the case for Facebook ads. You can have a budget target and you can have the actual ad spend. So you can monitor your actual ad spend with Facebook ads. So I will click on add a metric. And in this case, I will do it with even count, for instance, just as an example. And I can compare my sessions against uh, even counts and I can see that my progress is, is low, but this is just an example. So here I will keep with period and I will show it not as, a, not as a progress, but as a time series. And I will go to a style because I can customize this a little bit more. The first thing is that for this spark line, I can change the color. So I will make it this green and I can feel this. So it looks better. I really like it more. And I can make it smooth. Smooth is that I can remove the borders of this thing. And with this, you, now you know how to create scorecards with spark lines on Google Looker Studio so your data has more context. See you in the next tutorial. Hey there, let's see how to create heat maps on Google Looker Studio so you can see when your customers are interacting with your clients. And I will show you what I'm talking about, so I will start this tutorial. The first thing is that you will create a Google Looker Studio report and you will go to insert. And on insert, you will go with pivot table. Pivot table is the chart that we will use to create our heat map. So I will click on pivot table. The next step is that heat maps are generally big because we need to break down our data by days of week and hours of day. So make sure that you expand your chart. Then the rows that you will use for your data are the hours of day. So here I will choose hour of day. In this case, I am connecting Facebook as data. You can use any connector. Most connectors have hourly uh, breakdowns for Facebook ads. It is called hourly stats aggregated by advertiser. And the column dimensions that you will use to break down your data is day of week. So here I will choose day of week and the metric can be anything that you want to see to visualize concentration. So you can use engagements, clicks, conversions, whatever. So here I will be using clicks for Facebook ads. So I want to see at what time people are interacting most, the most with my ads. If I were using Google Analytics 4, then sessions will be a better way to do it. Here I will expand this uh, chart a little bit more. And now I have my heat map, but it still misses the heat. So I will show you how to do it. First, we need to sort the data. For the rows for hours, I need to make them descending. So I start from 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. They have an order and also for day of week. So I will do that. The sorting, instead of the metric, I will do it with the hour of day and I will make it ascending. So we start from early to night. And also for columns, day of week, it will be ascending to start from Sunday to uh, Thursday, Friday, and, and so on. So here I have this, I will click on chart and I will make a change. I will make this change the style of this thing. So here, instead of just pivot table, there is an option to add a pivot table, but as a heat map. And here you will be able to see a heat map where we will see concentration. In this exercise, what we are doing is that we can see exactly at what hour of day and what day of week we are having more interactions with our data. So in this case, for instance, we see that on Mondays and Tuesdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., let's say, uh, to 10 p.m., people are interacting the most. What you can do with this data? Uh, actually, uh, this is something I have done at Porter. When I want to launch webinars or emails and so on, I take in consideration peak hours. So I send content at this time because I know that people are more active during these hours. The other thing is I can reschedule my support team. If I know that my support team, uh, my clients are interacting more with me and they are reaching out to support uh, more often at this time, then I will have more people for support available at this time. And maybe for other time, I, I don't need them. Uh, I don't need to count on them. So. These are the kind of ideas that you can do with heat maps on Google Looker Studio.